Hello and welcome back everybody to Symphonic Rain. So before we start with today's episode, we got to talk about something that came up a few videos ago. I think two or three. Anyway, sorry that I couldn't react earlier, pre-recorded videos, etc. But uh, basically, some people said that uh, they don't like the new font. The new funk. I don't know how to pronounce that. Is it like French? Is it English? I don't know. The F-O-N-T. The new writing on screen. They say it's too blurry and uh, that they can't properly read it and stuff like that. Now, I personally think it looks much better. I also watched the videos, so it also looks in the videos much better. And it is much easier to read. In my personal, humble opinion. Now, since this is a Let's Play, I'll let you people vote. So, I'm gonna leave two comments in the comment section below. And uh, please, please uh, like the comment that represents your opinion. So there will be one comment with, uh, I want to have the recent font. And there will be one comment, I want to go back to the old font. Now, as mentioned, remember how the old font looked. It was barely even visible. And also the text went out of the box the whole time so that I had to open the lock like pretty every pretty much every third sentence. So please remember what you're deciding between, okay? Now I know it's kind of like I'm trying to convince you to vote for the recent font, I know that. But uh, I just want you to keep it in mind. Okay? Okay. So now, without further ado, I actually, actually I've got a good random story today, but I feel like um, we better talk about that next episode, otherwise we'll, won't even start this episode like ever. So here we go. Yeah, you got that right. Torta should have known these things better than anyone, so why was she doing this? Torta, don't interrupt me. I don't like this attitude. Um, because she's a bad sister. Because she likes you too much. By the way, spoilers for those who have never seen Symphony Grain. Please skip like half a minute because I'm not going to talk long about it. Um, I I've seen all the routes because I'm using a guide, obviously. And there is no route for the sister of Torta. Now what the hell does that mean? Is there no route where Chris is true and honest to her? Is he like a cheating douchebag in each and every route? <laughs> this is gonna be interesting to see where that goes. Maybe not every route is a romance. Maybe that is an explanation. The answer should have been obvious. She was doing this for me. Yeah, that's the simple variation of what I just said. Fine. Hi. Now you're asking for the impossible. I am. Actually, the only person he says that to... Uh, actually, the only person I ever realized he said this to is you. Oh, by the way. Uh, I was told in the comments that the reason why he doesn't meet Fall is because uh, she said next week. So here we are. I'm the idiot, not the game. Just wanted to make that clear. Good work anyway. Torta lifted her head from the cafeteria table and reached for her cup. I'd say it isn't. It is still hot. Now, are we drinking tea or coffee? Uh, coffee. You're acting like you're not a Tota lifted her head from the cafeteria and for her cup. Huh. So this, uh, apparently this font kind of breaks the lock. Well, that's also not so very helpful. Keep that in mind when you're voting. I don't know, I just want to be fair, fair here. But still, I like this one better. Just saying. But uh, are we drinking coffee? Apparently we're drinking coffee. I, I don't even drink coffee at all. I hate coffee. But uh, if we drink coffee, too hot isn't good as well. See? <laughs> See? 
I told you so, didn't I? I'm getting hot just by looking at it. It's not that cold in here, you know. You can't even handle hot stuff. You know, that with a comma, you can't even handle comma hot stuff. <laughs> By then, it had probably cooled down just enough, since Torta's smile returned as she brought the cup to her lips. Mm, You've liked that since you were a kid, haven't you? Torta seemed to really enjoy drinking her cup of hot chocolate. Ah, okay, chocolate. Now, chocolate is delicious hot. I'll give you that. Because that's all Chocolata Calda really was. If you say so, I don't know. On second thought, you probably couldn't even really call it a beverage. Sure, you drank it at first, but in most cases you ended up spooning out the thickened residue and eating it. It's sweet and heavy on the stomach. I don't think I could ever drink a full cup. Wow. Because it's heavy on the stomach, you can't drink a complete cup? You're a real man. You know, the real man. Now I know, I know I'm shaming here, and I probably shouldn't shame Chris for that. But I've read a lot of was stuff, you know. Like, for example, in Everlasting Summer, where Simeon complained about carrying 10 kilos around or something like that. In a backpack, even. Like, such a was. But this. I mean, too sweet, I'll take it. But too heavy on the stomach? Like, be a man and swallow that shit. I suppose it is winter, but then again, it doesn't really get that cold here. With those words, I was strongly reminded of my faraway hometown, just as I was when I read Ari's letter. The country was split in two by, by mountains. We were living, we were born on the north side, and we're currently living in the south. Oh, so we're really doing Italy here, huh? Now. I'm actually not sure, is Italy divided by mountains? Yeah, I, I'm not good with geography, but I'm good with uh, history and culture and stuff, and there is actually a lot of, you know, differences, let's call it like that, between North and South Italy. I mean, these days probably not as, not, not as much as it once was, but you know. It's actually similar to Germany when I think about it. Italy is also uh, a country that united very late in its history. But, you know, just just on the side. If you're interested in that, you know, you probably can look up Wikipedia. It's probably not what you look a Let's Play for, to be honest. The climate and temperature were a bit different. And even in the same winter, it could be gentle here. She stirred the chocolate in her cup with a spoon, her delighted expression showing no sign of crumbling. Fine, just don't say it's hot anymore, okay? Okay, okay. Fine. <laughs> it was good to the end. It was good to end the topic in good humor. I spoke up again with the underlying intent of apologizing for today. Thanks for today. <laughs> Torta tilted her cup and happily took another sip. Are you sure it's enough? I'm glad it came cheap though. <laughs> I never really expected you to. That is not what I meant. Though in truth, it kinda was what I meant. But one thing puzzles me. Why did you only ask male students? It might have been a bit of an intrusive question, but I just couldn't suppress my curiosity. Because she doesn't want you to end up with forever with who you ever compose... Oh god, I fucked that sentence up. Because she doesn't want you to be forever in love with a person you perform together. And somewhere in the sentence there needs to be a with. I figured one would normally focus on friends they could easily ask a favor of. It's just that there are a lot of males among your close friends, then that's fine. I think I read that sentence wrong. God damn it, I'm, I'm having a bad reading day today again. If it's just that there are a lot of males among your... See, friends, then that's fine. God damn it, Locke. I tried to sound frivolous, but if this really were the case, I wouldn't be too happy about it. 
Finished with her hot chocolate, Torta placed the cup on the table and focused her attention on me. Because it bothered me. Another thing. The last boy she asked didn't even know her name. And some only realized who she was after she explained she was a fellow vocalist. Sorta. <laughs> but that's only a third of the reason. There's my jealousy as your childhood friend, and my concern as your friend, and the concern from my little friend. This little friend? <laughs> Wasn't that last student someone you didn't even know? Could it be that you don't have any female friends? My severely impolite question didn't seem to register with Torta immediately. Apparently, it required some time to, for it to sink in. Yeah, you're not like me. I know that. You were about to say it to me, weren't you? Fine, fine. So, was there some reason you didn't ask them? Or were they just not available today? Why not? What you talked about the other day? I thought you didn't believe in it. Then why? <laughs> That's not a lot. Yeah, obviously. I, uh, I'm not even going to bother right now. And what about the rest? I don't really think there are. Okay, that seems like a rather uh, heavy turn of, you know, topics. But okay. Oh, that came out of the blue. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, so I am supposed to follow the, um, uh, I, fo I have to follow the guide, therefore I don't have to start a sh shitstorm in the comments, I personally don't believe in God, so uh, I'll choose I don't, because that is what guide says. In the true sense of the word, I don't believe I do, but what about it? Mm. Yeah, because making religious people angry is like the worst idea. I suppose so. Well, I personally, I don't scribble on church uh, walls as little as I scribble on any wall. Like, how about not being an asshole? Like, step number one, not being an asshole. Step number two, be actually a good person. But I'm working on that. But right now, I'm really trying hard not to be an asshole. And, like, I actually, now that I think about it, I actually know a church where all were people scribbled on. Like, maybe it's in Japan that they don't scribble on temples and stuff like that. But I don't believe this actually to be true. It seemed a bit unreasonable to attribute that to nine-tenths of the reason. And I wasn't even going to try to rationalize that far-fetched explanation just now. You're smarter than me, I guess. Well, I sort of see where you're coming from. So you got up. But... God, huh? On the other hand, they're in Italy. They're not in Japan now that I think about it. Or they are in imaginary Italy. Yeah, same here. That's why we go to church to pray sometimes. If people can better their lives by shaping their morals according to some religious creed, then you could say that God definitely exists. No, a certain someone told me.
As she pictured that person in her mind, Torta looked a bit downcast and whispered in a soft tone of voice. Huh? If he existed. Gee, I guess many religious people do that. Nah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go too deep into that. But you know, wouldn't it be nice if there was like a actual, like a higher power who actually would like make solutions and stuff? What brought that on all of a sudden? I suppose I do, but that's not going to happen. That's not like you. In an apparent change of mood, Torta stood up and picked up the empty cup. Yeah, let's. While the rain was no surprise, it seemed darker than usual outside. I'm home. I heard Fawny reply from inside the room. Hmm? Yeah, sort of. I threw my back in the room and dried my hair with a towel left at the front door. Yeah, what a surprise, as usual. You got that right. We exchanged small talk as I faced the sky through the window. I dumped the towel in the laundry basket and finally entered the room. Tata was helping me finding a partner. Mm, excuse me. It was hopeless. Our method of searching was kind of flawed. Also, I behaved like a douche, but pshht. Tata just forced her way into every other practice room to ask if the person inside would partner with me. She knocked on the soundproof doors, and if the people inside noticed, she barged in. Just like that. Exactly. I take it you can imagine the result. I suppose you could say that. While Tata was generally a level-headed individual, she seemed to be missing a few screws every so often. Although few and far between, Forney had met Tarta a few times in the past. Although, of course, she had gained a more solid image of her due to me having talked about her a lot. I am. I wasn't sure how Forney felt about Tarta exactly, but it was clear she liked her. She seemed to feel the same about Ari, who came up in our conversations about just as often. I proceeded to tell Forney about the rest of my day like I always did. After having sat through the whole story, Forney didn't seem bored, but actually rather happy. And while she may have always told me so, it looked like she really enjoyed hearing stories of the outside world. I guess. Anyway, actually he says also to other people, I guess. I probably haven't been paying attention though. At least to this detail. Anyway, I'm going to make dinner. Let's see what there is. Wow, oh, okay, sudden change of time. I cook myself a simple meal, and the day soon ends. Entrance by the sound of the rain pattering against the window, I fell into a slumber. Next day. Another day, another... Okay, uh, we're not... This game, what, from when was it again? From 2003. Ah, so we're already in Euro time, huh? You know, a lot of good things about the Euro economy, blah blah blah. But you know, it would be fun if you could say like, another day, another... What do you call it in English? Lira? Like the, Ital the, the old Italian money? I don't know what you call it in English now that I think about it. So my whole plan was flawed from the beginning. But I guess I have to say another day, another Euro. A long five days had come to an end. I had spent my free Saturdays in leisure. And today I was just idly killing time as well. The usual life. Well then. It was slightly past six o'clock. 
A letter from Ari would arrive soon. Fonny affirmed, noticing me talking to myself. I'll go check. The mailbox was pretty close. In fact, it was located right outside my door. Even so, Fonny always saw me off like that. I never showed her the letters from Ari. She, she badgered me about it at first, but she got off my case when I told her I was too embarrassed to show her. Well, the only reason the letters were on her mind in the first place was because we always performed our ensembles afterward. As expected, the letter had already arrived. I retrieved it from the mailbox and returned to my room. I still had a letter to read and a reply to write, but I could tell from her restlessly fluttering wings that Forney's mind was already on the ensemble. She really was quite simple-minded. Ignoring her, I carefully removed the seal from the envelope and took the letter out. As usual, there was only one sheet of paper inside. Chris, ちょっと言葉遣いは変わったのに中身は全然変わってないって Actually, good point. Hanashiがそれちゃったね。とにかく真面目に探した方がいいんじゃないのかな。それとも私がこの手紙を書いてる頃には良い人が見つかって、それならごめんね。最初に謝っておくね。そうじゃないと子供みたいに今やってるとこ
Still, I felt I had to keep some distance from her. Besides, this wasn't something to decide on the spot anyway. I needed a little more time. Was it really such a bad idea to wait a few more days before tackling this issue? There wasn't much time left. Even so, it was still more than a month. What a bother. I knew it was going to keep coming back to haunt me, but that was the only way I could think of it right now. Does it look like I have? Then why don't you tell me to hurry up and write it? Despite having asked her to tell me that myself, I still felt a bit frustrated. I merely intended to correct her. But I wouldn't get through to Forney, even if I explained that to her. Okay, okay. I answered nonchalantly, then began preparations to write a reply. I would just talk about something random. And write around the whole thing, a uh, whole partnering with Tarta thing. I figured she'd just repeat the same thing in her next letter, but I could think about it again when that time came. I just wanted to put it off a little for now. I'm finishing it up now. The letter comprised only one sheet of paper, about the same length as Ari's. I put the letter from Ari in the drawer, wondering if she had accumulated about the same amount of paper by now. I then inserted the letter I just wrote into an anti empty envelope. Seeing that, Forney quickly began doing vocal exercises. I felt tempted to tease her for putting on such an ostentatious display. But I passed on that, figuring Forney might get angry, especially after I'd already made her wait. Then, let's begin. Hi, hi! And so, my usual ensemble with the fairy began, and the day came to an end. Oh, we're not actually doing it. Okay. Now, I was told in the comments how to fix the whole automatic playing stuff. Now that I did it, I didn't even need it here. Hey, that's typical. That is, such is life. You prepare something, then it doesn't happen. It happened to me like a thousand times in tests. Except for Latin. Like in Latin, I don't know why, but I kinda... I kinda figured out our teacher at least a little bit. So I always had a good feeling what kind of texts our teacher would choose. Like from which author, not always like the exact right text, but at least like the author and stuff and like the topic at least. I always was quite good with it and that is why I was always quite well prepared. Anyway, as usual I was awoken by Forney's voice. And as usual I prepared for school. Changes had gradually begun to creep in my daily life, which until last week had still been normal. I might come home a bit later from today onward. Well, yeah, because last week I went around looking for a partner. I'm just saying it might get even later this week. Come on now. Did you really think I was done after I found someone? I still have to practice, so I'll obviously get home later. You're quick to agree. I was already prepared for the many complaints like You're late! and Chris, you idiot! And I can't do better. Pretty much. Okay, I'm sorry. Why? Is that supposed to be an impression of me? I take it you understand that. Anyway, I can't rule out the possibility, but I'll try to keep Sundays free. I wasn't planning on practicing on a free day anyway, though. That's not true. Yes, really. I lied, but anyone would get offended with something like that said straight to their face. I thought I'd brush away the topic for now. Anyways, what I was trying to say was, I think I might get home late, so don't worry about me. 
Although it didn't happen often, Forney was quick to understand sometimes. Whenever I got irritated or refused to yield no matter what, she'd pull back like she did just now. Outside of that, she was often selfish and would say things that drove me up to the wall, so I couldn't praise her too much either. Well then, I'm off. Taking a deep breath of the damp morning air, I ran off into the rain. The letter to Ari was in my bag, safe from the rain. I swiftly crossed the short distance to the mailbox, then inserted the letter while sheeting it with my body. My letter wouldn't, would reach Ari, and afterwards hers would reach me. At least this was a cycle that remained constant. I mean, so much... I mean, as of now, there is not Ohio. so much change ha happening in your life. Mm, should I go on? Ah, we made so little progress. I talked so much again. Okay, let's keep going for a little bit at least. Good morning. As I was warming up my fingers, Miss Cordell entered the lesson room a few moments after me. How did you find out about that? That doesn't seem to answer my question. She must have heard from Asino or something. Well, I don't think it was all that fruitless. Yes, more or less. Do you know of a student named Falsita Fawcett? Ah. Though nothing is set in stone yet, we agree to place together sometime. I don't know yet, of course. I will after I've played with her once, this week or so. The name I gave should have come pretty unexpected, but Miss Cordell didn't seem surprised at all. But then, I'd never seen Miss Cordell face before, so if she ever was, it would be pretty unsettling. Besides that, there was Lise. But that was just too uncertain to lead, so I thought I'd not bring it up. Why are you always bullying Chris? I mean, I'm bullying Chris too. But I'm not in his visual novel. I'm not actually bullying him, I'm just a bit shit-talking for fun. I guess you are too. I guess I am evil. God damn it! what was that about not being an asshole? Gotta work on that again. I feel a little awkward at being complimented just for getting one extra candidate. It didn't. Anytime. Oh, are we actually doing this this time? Oh. Um. Now I am uncertain if, um,. Putting this stuff on autoplay, it plays automatically, or if it just skips the scenes. Let me know in the comments below, because I don't know, should there have been like a playing scene right now? Like a music playing scene? Eh, anyway. Although I didn't have much appetite, I went and finished my lunch. And just as I was wondering what was keeping her, Tota appeared and seated herself next to me. Ohayou. Ah, good morning. Sorry. Miss Cordell asked me the same thing today and last week. Thanks for the positive input. Well, I guess the gist of it is that I now have one more candidate. Huh? Okay, let me say one thing. So far, I enjoy this visual novel a lot, actually. And I think it is pretty well written, not gonna lie. Like, I, I, I feel like this was actually a pretty good recommendation. Like, I mean, I play this for charity, so it's uh, like a, for a good cause anyway. But uh, it seems like it's also a good cause for my mind, because I'm actually liking it. That being said, like... Ah, this whole jealous thing with Torta already goes like a little bit on my nerves. They're also like hammering it in, like too much. They're doing too much. I'm not stupid, you know? Now you, you, you probably have to wonder for what 
kind of age this game is. I mean, there is no red erotic contents. On the other hand, I was told it is dark, but like, anyway, I, I feel like they're hammering the point so much home that, you know, every... Like, I get it. Thank you, game, I get it. It's too much. Don't know if you know her, but her name is Falsita. She really was that famous, huh? I guess. She said Tuesday or Thursday. Where do we ask? She said she had things to do on other days. Hey, Tata. Why was she asking these questions? As I was about to inquire, Tata cast her gaze downward, as if in thought for a moment, then faced me again. Yeah, I guess so. I still might go practicing on my own, though. However, for me that was generally a rare occurrence. And it's not like I really like you, but Sorry that I talked over her. Ah, controller! Again! After last episode, I thought we settled our problems. But like, come on. You're being selfish. Like everybody sees it. We all see it. I see. So she wrote you about it as well. You know what would be a fun twist? A fun twist would be that she's not selfish and that she's actually really only working for Ari. That would be an actual fun twist. Like that would be that would be something like I'd be legitimately surprised about. That would be cool now that I think about it. Like only the all all she had in mind was uh, the good for her childhood friend and her sister and it wasn't like she actually had a crush on Chris. Like that would be an awesome turn of events. Huh. Well, I guess we shall see. Yeah, she said she felt she was meddling. I suppose it wouldn't hurt. Today, huh? Nah, I'll pass for today. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Thanks. And I'm sorry. I understood her intentions, but I hadn't quite sorted out my feelings yet. I wonder if I'd been able to refuse her more easily without Ari's encouragement. She told me to not think about her but to put priority on what I wanted to do. Even so, the reason I was confused right now was because of what she wrote. Perhaps Ari would feel more at ease if I partnered with Tata, a person she knew well, rather than a complete stranger. Yeah, it's probably something like selfishness. Like, he mentioned everyone expected Tata and him becoming a couple. And it's probably just like a selfless gesture of Ari, like, do stuff with her, I don't mind. You know, like the whole... Uh, I, 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 I don't want to drop Sklanat spoilers, but you're probably getting what I'm trying to say, if you know Klanat. Okay. It didn't show in her behavior, and I was probably the only one who could tell, but there was a hint of sadness in her voice as she left the cafeteria. Perhaps I had to consider the matter a bit more optimistically than I was doing. It was too late now, though, so I just thought I'd just invite her to practice next time. Well then, what shall I do now? Well, we'll find out what you do next episode. Oh, I'm doing the fall route. Ha! Huh. Where will I go? To the old school building or to the practice room? 
come back to find out next episode. So, thank everybody for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.